We're just putting enough block in so it overlaps under our ground height. So we're going to go through the procedure of how we engineered that. We need to expose the concrete foundation we poured earlier. We fix this with my small jackhammer setting our cornerstone. We pour concrete inside it and let it set up for the next stage. off your shoes and leave the winter and the pain it brings to you. Lay your head upon my shoulder, shut off your thoughts and clear your mind. So part of engineering this part of our wall was to not have to waste all the time in building this wall at its full height into this hillside. So the trick there is to have a stepped concrete foundation so we're not wasting block and wasting all the excavation time in building this full height of this wall into this hill. We're just putting enough block in so it overlaps under our ground height on this slope. So we're gonna go through the procedure of how we engineered that. We need to get this corner set before we can build out the rest of the wall in between. We're going to get started by clearing some of the gravel out of our way. We need to expose the concrete foundation we poured earlier. Here you can see how this concrete foundation matches the height of the block we've laid. This is part of the system I designed. So the underground part of this wall is all solid concrete, which adds a lot of strength to the system and also saves a lot of time and resources in having to build this block to its full height underground. We're also gonna to have to create a little form to keep the gravel out of the area where we're gonna stick this block. We're building a little retaining wall to hold the gravel in place so we can still use the ramp for bringing materials and tools on site. Before we start setting our block, we're gonna to have to make a few adjustments with our foundation. This concrete got in the way of where our wall lines up, so we've just got to chisel a bit out of the way. It's not unusual for our concrete foundations to sometimes be a couple of mil out. We fix this with my small jackhammer and the crowbar used as a chisel, and then sweep the area clean so we can lay our block out. Setting our cornerstone in the right height and right place is key like it was on the other side of our wall. Using our spirit level set square and packers, we align the cornerstone so it's in exactly the right position and do a dry layout to make sure our block's gonna line up properly on this foundation. Once the cornerstone and the blocks are roughly lined out, we double check with our level we continue to make micro adjustments, nudging these blocks exactly into the right position. It's key that we get these exactly right, otherwise our wall won't come out flat and straight. With our corner block and a block either side of it in place, we set one of our half blocks on packers and adjust it to line up to the block next to it. With our corner section complete and lined up with the existing wall, we pour concrete inside it to lock it into the foundation. We take extra care pouring this concrete in as these blocks aren't attached and could bump out of alignment easily. But if we're careful with this process, we can get the concrete in without moving these blocks off their alignment. Once we've got about 50 mil of concrete in the bottom base of these blocks, we agitate it so it moves through under the packers to create a really good adhesion to our foundation. Once we're satisfied, the concrete's moved all the way underneath the block through the gap that we created with our packers. We continue to top it up until it spills over the cutouts we made with our wet saw. We're also pouring concrete into the void behind these blocks to create a really solid foundation for this corner section of the wall. As we add more concrete into the system, we continue to agitate it. This is really critical because it makes sure the concrete is sticking to the block and the foundation. 
It's important to constantly be scraping the surfaces as this helps the concrete bond tightly to the block and the concrete foundation. As the concrete fills the block, we make sure that the new rebar we're adding to the system ends up vertical and centered in the block. We continue adding concrete until the blocks are about halfway full. Then we smooth everything off and let it set up for the next stage. While we're letting the ramp corner concrete set up, we're gonna go get started on the other end of the wall and do some more dry stone wall as we have to do this in single course layers to allow the concrete to set each day. We're starting in the left hand corner of the wall where we've already laid out some blocks and now we're back filling in with our pigmented concrete. We're continuing the same process we did in the early episode where we backfill the stone and thoroughly agitate it with our trowel to get a really good adhesion between the stone and the previous layer of concrete. I try to make sure that we thoroughly fill all the gaps between the stone and work the concrete deeply into these cracks. We continue to add new stones and backfill them as we work our way along the wall. We take extra care when we're adding more concrete or pouring more concrete in as we don't want to bump these stones out of alignment. This is a good example of how I finish off this corner of the wall. I found a nice square block I want to fit in place. I'm backfilling it with some concrete. It's not quite stable. So I need to grab a piece of scrap concrete, place it behind it. Now it's propping it up vertically. And then I add a packer in the front of it to keep the profile consistent with the other stones. We then add some concrete on top of that scrap piece of concrete I'm using to back up this stone. And to finish this section of the wall off, we find a small stone to fit between the large stone I just laid and the one next to it, and continue to fill them out level with concrete so they're ready for the next course. I just add a few more pieces of scrap concrete to help fill out this area so we can bring the concrete up to the top of these stones. So we get another layer of stone up today with this new brace. We got a good batch of stones in on this pour. I'm just using over my leftover cement from the corner I did up over here. That's the base of this end of the wall. So now the wall's just going to go up. With the entire footprint of the wall complete, it's just a matter of us laying all the additional courses on top of the block. We have four courses to lay, and I'll be going through that procedure of that in coming episodes, but in the time being, we're gonna need more block on site. So our next task will be to get more block, which will be a lot easier, because now we have the gravel ramp. Take the wall, you the hand it on. We're all fighting wars. a 
hard day of laying stone and moving all this block in. It's good to take a break, enjoy the sunshine and take in some of this beautiful countryside. In the cold Montgomery rain, words ring out like a smoking gun. Trying to find a reason but I ain't got one. Taking me down, wash away the pain. In the cold Montgomery rain. Join me on the next episode as we lay some of the block we brought in today. joining me this week in my YouTube channel. Check the link below and while you're at it, hit the subscribe button or make a comment so I can help you with your future construction solutions. And don't forget to follow our channel for more ideas and how-to tips for home and garden projects.